So far, all the animations that we've seen can be classified as enter animations. In other words, they start playing when the page loads or when we fire off an event. For example, here I have a toggle animation button, and when I click it, we're going to see a box smoothly fade in over the course of three seconds. So here's this enter animation. But what happens when we click it again to toggle it? Whoa, that was pretty harsh. That was pretty abrupt. It would be kind of nice to have that box toggle back out so it had a nice smooth fade out. So let's explore how we can do that now with Frame Remotion and the Animate Presence component. To get ourselves oriented, let's first look at what's happening inside of our component. Basically, we have two elements. We have the button, which is going to toggle the animation, and we also have a div, which, as you can see, I've turned into a motion div. Now we're also importing useState from React, and we're creating a piece of state called isVisible. This is initialized to false. In here on line 9, what you can see is that the motion.div is being conditionally rendered. So in other words, since isVisible is starting out as false, the motion.div is not going to be displayed. We can also say that it's not yet mounted, or it hasn't been added to the React tree yet. Once the button is clicked, we're calling setIsVisible, to toggle this piece of state, and we're flipping is visible from whatever it was. So once we click the button the first time, is visible will become true, and then this motion.div will be added to the React tree and mount in the DOM. When that happens, our enter animation will play out. So we're going to start from an initial opacity of 0, fade up to an opacity of 1 over the course of 3 seconds. Now once we've clicked our button and the element is in the DOM, if I click this button again, is visible is going to become false, and this div is going to be removed from the DOM. If I actually want to fade this out when the button's clicked, there's another prop that we can use, and that's called exit. And in exit, we can define the property, in this case opacity, that we want to animate out. So we'll be coming from an opacity of 1, and we want to animate it out on exit back to 0. So let's see now if this works. So first I'm going to toggle the div in, and we get this nice fade in. And now when I toggle again, whoa, it still didn't work. We still have that harsh, abrupt exit. Well, the issue is that when a component gets removed from the React tree and gets unmounted, this exit animation doesn't have a chance to play out because React's already removed the component from the tree. This exit prop is just left hanging. It's like, hey, you guys forgot about me. What happened? Well, this is where the Animate Presence component comes in to save the day. So let's go ahead and import Animate Presence from Frame or Motion. And now to use it, what we want to do is wrap both the element along with the conditional state inside of it. So we'll do Animate Presence, and then we'll take the closing tag and wrap it around both the conditional statement and the element. And now let's see what kind of result we get. We'll toggle in, smooth fade in, and toggle out, smooth fade out. So because we've wrapped all of this stuff inside of Animate Presence, this conditional state of is visible, when it does become false once again, it sort of like sends a signal to Animate Presence saying, hey, this element is about to be removed from the DOM, but hold up, before you do so, play this exit animation. How nice is that? And once this three seconds is up, well, component, you're free to go. Now, notice how the conditional rendering of this motion.div, that this is a direct child of the animate presence component. And that's essential for animate presence to work because it detects the unmounting of a direct child. So just to make the point clear, let's say that instead of this motion.div being the direct child of animate presence, instead we wrapped it in another div. So let's wrap this whole thing in another div and format it a little bit. And now if we try the animation, when we toggle in, we will see the enter animation. However, when we toggle it again, well, now we've lost our exit animation. And what's happened is that this is no longer a direct child of Animate Presence, but it's become more like a grandchild. So that's an essential thing to know in order to make Animate Presence work for you. Now I have a new example up here, and this one is going to illustrate the usage of Animate Presence when you have multiple child elements. So first, a little demo of what this does. We have a list of items, 
and besides each item, we have a button to remove that particular item from the list. So let's start by refreshing the page, and we'll see a little enter animation, a little fade in. And then if we want to remove a particular item from the list, when we click remove, we'll see a little exit animation, a little fade out. So now let's take a look at our code and see how this is all working. So we have an unordered list, the UL, and inside of it we're mapping over an array of items, which you can see here are just an array of numbers. For each of these items in the array, we're outputting an LI along with a button. Even though we're outputting multiple elements, each one of them is still a direct child of animate presence. And therefore, using the exit prop on each one of these is going to work just fine. Now when a button is clicked on one of these list items, we call remove item, which we've defined up here, and we pass in the item itself, which is just a number from this array. So the item comes in as the ID, and we call set items to update this array by using JavaScript's filter method. And here we're checking whether or not the ID that was passed in matches the item. Because if it does match the item, we're going to filter it out of the array. Now the important thing to note is that every time this array gets updated, the component gets re-rendered, and since Animate Presence is doing its job here and wrapping our items, it knows whether or not they're present or not present in the DOM. The key thing that I want to point out here though, no pun intended, is this key prop. And the key prop is something that's native to React. And when working with Animate Presence, the key prop is necessary when you have multiple child elements. And this key prop, it needs to be unique for each of the list items. And in this case, we can use the items themselves because we have kind of a contrived example here with only one, two, and three in it. So we know they're all unique. Without setting a unique key for each item, you can possibly experience some weird behavior. Because of the way that arrays get reordered when items are added or removed, that can make it difficult for React to keep accurate track of which item is which. So setting a unique key for each item really helps React keep track of this stuff. If you're interested in learning how to bring your web pages to life with cool animations, GSAP, and scrolly telling techniques, check out my course, Scrolly Telling 101. Since I launched the course, the response has been amazing, with students commenting on the wealth of web dev tips and tricks included in the lessons. I'm going to leave a link down below for you, and you can start by checking out some of the free preview videos there. I think you're going to love it.